Good morning students. Welcome back to the class. In this class, let us discuss about the basics of protein purification techniques. There are uh, different characteristic methods available in order to separate or purify a protein from the crude extract. So based on the charge, we can separate the protein by using ion exchange chromatography or electrophoresis and also isoelectric focusing. And based on their polarity, we have adsorption chromatography, paper chromatography, reverse phase chromatography and hydrophobic interaction method. Then based on the size also, there are many different methods or techniques available like dialysis and ultrafiltration, gel electrophoresis, gel filtration chromatography and ultracentrification. Then affinity chromatography is a technique which is based on the specificity of the molecule. So by using all these different techniques or the characteristic method, we can purify a protein from the crude extract. So, preliminary purification methods what we follow like uh, dialysis is done in order to separate the uh, small molecules from the macromolecules then that extract is precipitated or concentration by precipitation method that is by using salt precipitation method or by using solvent precipitation method then gel filtration and ion exchange chromatography helps to separate the protein then ultrafiltration through a membrane system then lyophilization is done finally in order to store the uh, purified protein for uh, further characterization. Uh, understand the principle of all these different techniques for purification of protein. First let us start with the dialysis. So dialysis is a process of separating or it is a separating process of the molecules present in solution based on their size. So dialysis is a process of separating the molecules present, the solute molecules present in the solution based on their size by using semi-permeable membrane. So try to understand this. Dialysis is, let me repeat, it's a separating procedure of the molecules present in solution based on what based on their size so how it is separated by using semi-permeable membrane so now what is semi-permeable membrane so semi-permeable membrane refers to a membrane which is selectively permeable which means which allows only certain molecules to pass through it and it does not allow all the molecules to pass through it Okay, so that is what a semi-permeable or selectively permeable membrane. So which are the membranes generally used? So the membranes are cellulose or modified cellulose or sometimes synthetic polymer is also used like uh, cellulose acetate or nitrocellulose membranes are generally employed in the dialysis as a semi-permeable membrane. Know that uh, in dialysis, it separate the molecules based on their size across a semi-permeable membrane. But what is the principle underlying the separation? So it is based on the size, of course, but what happens really is diffusion across the membrane. So you know the definition of diffusion is it is the movement of solute molecules in a solution. It can be any molecule. So it's the movement of molecules in a solution from area of its higher concentration to the area of its lower concentration till. So how long this movement occurs? Until the equilibrium is reached. Isn't it? So even in case of dialysis also, the molecules, they start moving across the semi-permeable membrane into the buffer that is kept outside until the uh, equilibrium is reached. So that is how the small molecules can be separated from this macromolecules in case of dialysis. So I think this picture helps you to understand what exactly happens in dialysis. So this is called dialysis tube. So which is made up of that semi-permeable membrane. So which has a small pores on it. 
and we have taken a concentrated solution inside it so the concentrated solution containing that crude extract of the protein along with other contaminants or the small molecules or any salt or any other contaminants that is present in this crude extract so we have put this extract inside this tube dialysis tube at the back and on both the sides you can see it is closed by using the clip and now this dialysis tube is kept inside a beaker containing a buffer so this is the buffer solution outside so wherein the dialysis tube at the bag is kept now what will happen is because you can see the solute molecules inside the tube is more diffusion starts so diffusion as you know it continues until there is an equilibrium both here outside and inside this tube then which molecules will start moving it is only the small molecules that are able to pass through this membrane they will come out whereas the large molecules which cannot cross this membrane will be retained inside the dialysis bag okay so that is how so this is at the start of dialysis whereas in equilibrium stage what will happen is all the small molecules would have come into the buffer whereas the large molecules which are not given cannot pass this uh, a dialysis membrane or the semi permeable membrane they are stayed inside okay so that the high molecular weight particles uh, like uh, whether it can be starch or polysaccharide or proteins or fats they will all be restricted or they will all be retained inside so this is one of the commonly used so dialysis is one of the commonly used laboratory technique to get rid of the small molecules from all this macro molecules now let us know the principle of the next technique used for purifying the protein that is gel filtration chromatography this is also called as gel permeation chromatography or molecular sieve chromatography or size exclusion chromatography these are the different names for gel filtration chromatography so the principle for this chromatography is here the molecules are separated based on their size so just like dialysis also here also the molecules are separated based on the size but what happens here is this is an example for a column chromatography there will be a glass column just like you have seen the burette right the same thing a glass column will be there a long column in which the stationary phase and mobile phase we use the terms what is stationary phase so stationary phase phase is the beads or the gel material that is packed inside that is why it is called gel filtration so in that glass column we would have packed it with the uh, gel which is a porous bead or the matrix and this is the stationary phase whereas mobile phase is the solvent system we use the buffer for uh, the movement of the molecules across this matrix and that is the buffer is the mobile phase so in this gel filtration or a column chromatography you have two terms that we use stationary phase and the mobile phase stationary phase is the gel or the porous bead material that is present inside the glass column whereas the buffer what is used to used for the movement of the molecule that is the mobile phase okay so i think uh, this pictorial representation for the gel filtration chromatography will make you understand the concept better here you can see uh, the column or the glass column is filled with or packed with the gel or the beads the beads are spherical in shape and they are porous in nature and to this column we are filling it with the buffer so the buffer enters the pore also and it is present in between the particle also that is the space between the particle the buffer is present both inside and outside also so the buffer that is present inside the uh, pore or the bead that is called as stationary phase and the buffer that is outside the pore or in between the space of these beads that is called as mobile phase okay now 
based on the size of the particles now we will pack the extract or the sample which we need to separate will be packed onto the column okay the sample this is called the sample which contain different sized particles now as the particle starts moving what will happen is the molecules which can enter the pore size of this bead they can enter and they will be retained so they will elute late whereas the larger molecules which cannot enter the pore size they will come out faster you can see so the movement of the larger molecule is faster compared to the movement of the smaller molecules the reason being smaller molecules will enter the pores or the i mean the beads also and they will take long time for it to come out we call it as elution so they take long time for it to elute whereas the larger molecules because they are not entering the gel or the bead they will just come out of this column faster so now depending on the size the separation is taking place that is why it is called as sieving it is like sieving the smaller and the larger particles right that is why it is molecular sieve chromatography and size exclusion because now different size particles are excluded uh, depending on their size right that is why it is size exclusion chromatography here i have another picture for you to understand it better so this is the column containing the matrix or the gel or the bead support as beads stationary phase and here we have loaded the sample with different sized particles now you can see as these particles starts moving along with the mobile phase the small molecules can enter the beads and the large molecules because they are not able to enter they are passing through the mobile phase and that is why they come out first or they elute first whereas the small molecules are eluted at the end or at the i mean small molecules elute later so now let's move on to the next purification technique that is ion exchange chromatography so this technique is also a separation technique where the proteins are separated based on the differences in their charge you know that proteins have a net charge right so proteins are made up of amino acids and if you remember amino acids have different charges now based on that proteins will also have a net charge on them and this is the basis for the protein to be separated based on its charge so what will happen here is when you load the sample see ion exchange chromatography is also an example for a column chromatography here also we'll have a, a matrix of the gel loaded on to the column and that is the stationary phase and the mobile phase what we use is the buffer so when you load the sample to be separated there will be an interaction between the charged particles present in the sample the sample that has to be separated and the oppositely charged resins in the stationary phase so the stationary phase contain a gel or the resin which also has a charge on it so the particles present in our sample to be separated also has a charged particle now there will be an interaction between the charged particles in the sample and also the oppositely charged resin present in the glass column that is the stationary phase okay so this uh, resin or the stationary phase what we are using that is uh, it is of two types so we call them as ion exchanger so based on that there are two types of ion exchange separation possible one is cation exchange or cation exchange resin which is called as cation exchanger and another one is anion exchange resin or anion exchanger this anion exchange is the stationary phase and it is positively charged here you have to understand and try to remember anion refers to a particle with a negative charge that you know but here we are not telling it as anion 
anion molecule but rather we are calling it as anion exchanger so anion exchanger is positively charged so that it can bind to a negatively charged particle that is anion is that clear so anion exchanger is positively charged and it can bind to the anion which is negatively charged similarly a cation exchanger is negatively charged and that can bind to a positively charged molecule is that clear anion exchanger is positively charged and cation exchanger is negatively charged so accordingly they bind to the oppositely charged particles of the example for uh, the anion and cation exchanger here you can see DAE that stands for diethyl amino ethyl which has a positive charge on it so positive charge if it contains a positive charge it binds to a negatively charged particle right so it is a anion exchanger i hope it is clear now similarly we have anx then quaternary amine commonly called as q then carboxymethyl if you see this has a negative charge in it so negative charge it can bind to which one it binds to a positively charged particle so it is called as cation exchanger so we have methyl sulfonate and sulfonyl group which have negative charges and hence they bind to cation or positively charged particle hence they are called as cation exchangers so these are some of the example for anion and cation exchangers let us see uh, the picture to understand this uh, principle of the chromatography technique of ion exchange chromatography now imagine we have taken a column which is filled with the resin uh say having a negative charge so a resin with a negative charge refers to which exchanger it is a cation exchanger so resin having a negative charge is the cation exchanger so now say for example we have loaded a uh, pack this column with a cation exchanger that is uh, carboxymethyl group so when you load your sample to be separated what will happen is the proteins with the positive charge that is basic proteins we call the mass so basic proteins having the positive charges they bind to this resin so here you can see the positively charged proteins or the basic proteins they are binding to this negatively charged resin and a proteins with the negative charge on them a net negative charge on them they are not able to bind to the resin and hence they are coming out okay so this is what is the principle where this technique or ion exchange chromatography it separate the proteins based on the net charge so here it can be the resin can be either cation exchanger or a anion exchanger now the next question is this protein has bound to the resin right now how to elute it or how to separate the protein that is bind to the resin so for this what we have to do is we can elute the bound protein by varying the ionic strength or by changing the ph of the buffer what we use here okay so that the interaction between the protein and the resin will become poor and that protein will be eluted out okay dear students in this class uh, we have discussed about uh, some of the preliminary methods for the po protein purification that is dialysis its principle and how it works then gel filtration chromatography and also about the ion exchange chromatography so in the next class we will discuss some more uh, techniques or the methods to purify the protein thank you